I think we're going to go ahead and get I think we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, so I'm um, Ben Doyle. I'm going to uh, facilitate this session. And this is the session on um, advocating for more um, state, federal, and philanthropic funding. And so um, we actually, Paul has like outlined a process. And I'm a big believer in like trusting the process. And so what we're going to do is uh, for 10 minutes, um, we're going to talk about actually 15 minutes. What are the first steps that need to happen in order to advocate for state, federal, and philanthropic funding? Right, So we're just going to kind of brainstorm the steps. Now, ordinarily, this isn't like making a list for other people to do. But I think in this case, it's maybe a little bit of both. Right, So you know, if Montpelier is going to advocate for more funding from various sources, what are the initial steps that need to happen to make that uh, go? And then for 10 minutes after that, we're going to talk about what are the resources that are going to be needed for this specific effort. If we're going to raise more federal, state, and philanthropic funding, what are the resources that we're going to need to do that? And then uh, we're going to do that for 10 minutes. And then we're just going to spend actually five minutes just like kind of thinking about like next steps. But really, like if you're interested in this effort, say, for example, if you're a legislator and you really want to kind of push this issue forward, you can sign up here. And you're not necessarily like signing up to be part of a committee or anything like that. But by signing up on this, it's saying, I'm interested in this issue. I want to be kept informed. And if there is an opportunity to engage in this work, like I want to be called upon, right? Does anybody have any kind of questions? OK, so let's start. I want to say, there's a lot of stuff that exists that people are not aware of. Yes. So it's partly on us to better communicate the structures that are there and how do we, and then how do we get people more engaged in it? There's central, there's Montpelier with all of its boards and commissions and everything. There's Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. There's um, state agencies like BEM and others who deal with this. There's Agency of Transportation is just putting out a resilience improvement yep. plan. There's all of this. And it's sort of people ask for those things as if they don't exist. Yep. So how do we better communicate and how do we engage people? OK, excellent. I'm going to push you a little bit and be like, can you, do you have a potential answer to that question? Right? Like, how do we? communicate more effectively or uncover more effectively the existing resources and systems that are out there? Some of the stuff I, OK, I could be biased because I'm kind of involved in this. Yeah. But often we put, we in the agencies put out things that are hard to digest. Yeah. We can put out things that are shorter and more engaging and more multimedia. But we also want to make it easier for people to in, be involved. Um, so some of it is on us, and some of it is on everyone to read more and understand what is going on. So I think it's it's a two-way street. A two-way street. So agencies and different funding organizations, different funding opportunities need to do a better job of communicating to Montpelier what's available, what they're already offering in digestible ways. And then it's up to all of us to actually seek that information out and understand it. Yeah. OK, great. Yes, Sarah. I'm thinking about Front Porch Forum and how that is often a local source of communication, but how agents, state agencies don't yeah. use it, right? Yeah. Like, why not find out where communities talk and move the resource conversations into those spaces like Front Porch Forum? Nice. Thank you. Yes. I just want to speak to reality of what's happening in a couple of places. So I'm Melissa, I own Positive Pi, and a lot of the big businesses in Montpelier are really lacking funding to get back open or to stay open. Yep. Smaller businesses, I think, are having an easier time or don't need as much to reopen. So all we've been given is the $20,000 BGAP grant, which most of us haven't even gotten yet. We haven't even started rebuilding because we're still waiting on funding. Yep. Um, so we do have a group already formed. Um, it's an advocacy group. We are we're meeting once a week. We're trying to put together an ask, which is what we were told to do. There's columns to the ask. There's an ask of what we need right now yeah. to rebuild and to make sure, like, I know Three Penny has said they've gotten the SBA loan, but unless they get more funding, they're not going to be able to make the payments on the loan on top of the uh, expansion they had just finished and will be bankrupt within a year so they need more funding in order to stay open i think that's true of a lot of the bigger businesses yep. in downtown there needs to be more funding so we're putting together an ask for that also an ask for the financial loss that we've lost 
in losing our entire summer and fall, which is our busiest season, yep. which get us through winter. We're gonna, uh, a lot of us are gonna be reopening in the winter when we're slow and aren't gonna be able to make it through without more funding. So these are being done already. Melissa Bounty, who spoke at the State House, is putting together this ask. She's working with our group. She's working with all the businesses, putting together an ask, but we don't know. A lot of people have told us ask, but don't count your chickens. It might not happen. So I don't know how to work to try to really get the case out there that if we don't get more funding probably a lot of the bigger businesses won't make it yeah and and won't and if and if flooding keeps happening they will not rebuild right. again yeah so i just wanted to say what is happening we do have a group that's putting out an ask we're hoping that it gets into the right hands and the right people here and bring more funding in um but but we really need more funding both for now and for the future in flood mitigation because most businesses have said They'll rebuild now, but if it keeps happening, they will not. And so there will not be a downtown if we don't get more funding. I really appreciate um, that perspective. And just really quick, like I think, um, it'll be so important that if the businesses really clearly articulate what their needs are, both in the short term and the long term. Yeah. And, you know, my hope at least would be an effort like this mm -hmm. would really help galvanize that ask. And instead of just the businesses themselves asking, the entire community is advocating on their behalf, right? Yeah. Which I think is really important. So, yes, sir. I'd like to uh, piggyback on what you just said because I was in your group last time and listening to you and your colleagues, and it was so clear that what you're confronting is a too little, too late set of options right now. And that if we don't do something bold, uh, your prediction is regrettably, sounds like gonna come true. I uh, would submit that the one thing to consider is <clears throat> a special session. Call a special session in the month of October. Prepare for that special session by collaborating with all of the communities in Vermont Who's rep all of the representatives and senators from the communities that are impacted, uh, start editorializing and banging on the governor's door to listen. That session should uh, uh, authorize the treasurer to uh, issue debt in an amount that's going to uh, meaningfully contribute to the collective cost in the state of Vermont for near term uh, uh, recovery. But, and, and that's self-help, not wait for the feds, do something here in Vermont. In exchange, however, there should be a payback mechanism. There's, if you issue debt, you have to have a plan for retiring that debt. So somebody needs to do the calculation as to what's the big number, what's the term on the debt, what's the annual amortization, how many beneficiaries are there, what kind of contribution could they make, potentially a combination of a special assessment district for the property owners, a little incremental addition on your taxes each year over 30 years, and a, uh, a local option increment on the businesses. So I get a pie at your place, I got another percent and a half or 2% that I'm paying. And I know that I'm doing it and I still have it downtown. Are you our senator? I am one of your three senators, yes. yes. Well, it's lovely to see you. <laughs> Thank you. This is on you guys. You need to lead a charge to get your colleagues to pay attention and to do something meaningful. And the nickels and dimes that you're getting are not going to do the job. And waiting for the feds to do it. Yeah. Uh, last time we said, well, you know, Hawaii. Everybody's talking about Hawaii. Then they're talking about Florida. Mm -hmm. And next week they're going to be talking about wherever Hurricane Lee hits. Sir, I self help. I, yeah, I told. Thank you. Yeah. I think that is really crystal clear. Action items, special session, look for debt mechanisms to get the money that's immediately needed. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, and basically piggybacking on what she was saying, I was in a different session last time, and Vince from Bibby Chippy was yeah. in my session, and he said that, you know, he said, here it is, we're struggling with small businesses. We operate on a very small percentage. He says, you're asking me to take on more debt, even at a three or four percent. He says, that's more debt. He says, that erodes yeah. my margin. He says, we should be looking at grants. I like the idea of a special session because right now, until there's actually funding in the legislature, I mean, certainly there's been some emergency yeah. funding that's been coming through, but how's it being dispersed? And there was actually a really good article on BP Diggory, and a number of business owners were saying how 
all this stuff that they've done, all the people were either got kicked out, rejected for whatever reason, and they, they said they still don't have their own funding. They've been kicked out for one reason or another. Yeah. And so it's really frustrating. If I was a business owner, I'd be really tearing my hair out. Can, can I ask, like, um, what's the action step that comes out? It's not tearing our hair out. Right? It's like, I, what's I, the action I, step? I honestly think you need to have a special section. You need to start looking at grants. And where the funding is going to be available to start rebuilding the job. Okay, great. Thanks. I just want to make sure we get some yeah, real I just quick. Because the mechanism might, yeah, yeah, great, great, great. Navigators. Yeah, Remember yeah. Obamacare, <laughs> navigators. Yeah. So I live in Montpelier. I come to you. You and I fill the application real time. And maybe even I'm authorized to say some element of it is approved. So when you have your bill and you have the money, the whole idea, get it out quick. Don't wait for the current bureaucracy to do it. Authorize, you know, ten grand for people to do that work. Great, thank you, sir. Uh, and did you have your hand? I did. Yes. Uh, so, Ann Watson, uh, one of your three senators. Um, so, I want to uh, put a couple of uh, other things on people's radar. One is that um, the, emer the the emergency board does meet uh, throughout uh, the, the off session, apparently. And so they also have the authority to move money around, uh, which is how Efficiency Vermont got, I think it's something like $10 million yeah, for um, a, a special uh, program to help people rebuild with more energy efficient um, appliances and whatnot. Um, so that, that is ongoing, that is happening. Um, it's composed of um, money chairs and whatnot. Um, Another thought that we can come back to it. <laughs> yeah, so I, I went to 110%. We need to get back in there. We need to get the work, you know, because I don't just trust having the administration go through the motions and do what they're doing because it's not enough right now. Where I would push back a bit is collectively we need to do it. You know, if it's myself and we're Democrats, the governor's a Republican, it gets into a partisan sort of piss and magic, excuse the verbiage, you know, if we're the ones calling for it. However, 72% of central Vermonters in the last poll last week so Governor Scott's doing a great job right now as far as flood relief there. So Montpelier voted for us, but they also voted for Governor Scott in this administration. We need a mechanism to really bring up the heat. And what better mechanism than have 500 people in the auditorium, up the hill, in the state house, and invite the governor to stand in front of all of us and say, what are you doing, right? That's the best mechanism I can think of as far as political pressure. Okay. So I so would say that as an action step. 500 people, governor, front of the room. Okay. Tell them what we need, right? Okay. Yeah. Is it possible that we could expand that circle too to like our congressional leaders or other folks? I think so, although I would want the heat firmly on him for okay. most of this. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. Spoken <laughs> like a, yes, yes, sir. <laughs> so just to build on all of this, um, putting heat on the governor, asking you folks to get back at it as soon as you can. Um, I think public relations is something that is or if somebody can tell me differently, I think it's missing. And we do a great job as, as a local community. We lock arms together. We we show that we do that almost to the extent, almost to the exclusion, I think, almost shooing away the attraction of the outside world. I think we're, if we're not already, I think we're very much at risk of being forgotten. Mm -hmm. Joe Biden showed up in Florida. I, I think he got to Hawaii too. I've lost track, but uh, and no, no swipe on him, but just... What does it take to get that level of attention here in Vermont? Yeah, we're little. Yeah, we're liberal. All that, all that stuff uh, that gets old. But the point is, part of this, part of this pie is a public relations effort that also lives beyond just the local effort and focusing on on state government and local government. Can I just ask a clarifying question on that? When you say public relations effort, is it? Uh public relations effort to tell the story or are you talking about a lobby like lobbyists or I like I what are you about talking lobbying, about but I, but I think yeah a loud story a loud storytelling, storytelling yeah. effort on yeah. the experience yeah, of mine. I, mean, I have a small business and I can tell you from my limited experience paying for public relations yeah. is part of how you get out there into the wider world and people become familiar with your story great thank you sir yes well, so I have a little different topic to bring up great um I, I talked to a friend of mine who was in flood insurance. He's retired now, but he said, well, you know about all the FEMA money you can get for hazard mitigation. I didn't really know, so I went on the website. There are these big grants you can get for hazard mitigation, flood prevention, infrastructure stuff to prevent and reduce future damages. 
And it, it turns out that in FY22, the federal government handed out $3 billion in two of these grant programs. My question is, who's going to go after that money? Is it the city? Is it the state? Is this new commission? I don't want yeah. that to get lost. And Great. We need to go after that money. Yep. Who's the eligible applicant for the money that's available? Yep. Yep. Great. Yes. Well, the other thing is, I don't know how much you guys have been following the latest late, late stuff about uh, what's happening in Washington, but apparently FEMA is down to $4 billion after all these disasters. And why this count? Why the city do some funds? But with the potential government shutdown next week, I don't know where that money's going to come from. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. So, Action so, steps, folks. Action steps. Yes. I, I remember the other thing I was going to yeah. say, which is that um, when Connor and I were involved in city government, um, we actually established that uh, the city had uh, a lobbyist. And so uh, I appreciate that, you know, there's already like organizing effort um, in you know, moving forward. That's great. Um, uh, I, I wonder if there is still a lobbyist for next session. I assume so, but I think we should, one action step would be to ensure that there is still a lobbyist because it's important that somebody is in the room at the right moment uh, to have those conversations. And I would also advocate that that person um, perhaps have a list of interested popular residents who they could alert to say, hey, this conversation is happening right now. Contact your representative. Put the pressure on when it's the right time, and uh, so so create a yep. list yep. and have the have the lobbyists alert folks when it's the right right moment. Perfect. Thank you, Ian. Yes. Um, I guess to get back off of the public relations aspect, it's like this reminds me a little bit of COVID and how we had a weekly address from the health commissioner on the status of the numbers what was being doing, what was expected of us. And we've got, but that has not happened. And this this is our own emergency to hit our state and not just Montpelier. And we had a, a void that has not been filled. And I think that if we had a weekly address where we had like what's being done and so pressure on the governor, call a special session, like, like y'all need money. Now, what is what two months after this? Can I ask a question? When you say have a, a di like a, a weekly yeah. press conference, like like I they do with COVID, someone. Okay, well that's one of my questions. Are you talking about like state government, local government, all like the leaders, all the leaders? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, great. <laughs> what other kind of separate action? Well, just a sec. I want to go here and then I'll go. Yes, yes go ahead. Well, and this is my I'm John. This is the first meeting I've been able to join, so this maybe is. Uh, stupid questions, so tell me if it is. But <laughs> no stupid uh, questions. Especially for, say, philanthropic fundraising going towards, say, for foundation, the corporate sector, etc. I think I don't do we have a clear sense of the total amount that is sort of needed. No. Yes, I don't think so. From a business, from residential, from because I think having some of some idea will help. Not so much for grant, but like if we're saying talking to corporate, you know, corporations, foundations, like we need to, they need to know how much we want. Right, so, or I think having some sort of so a real effort needs to, yeah, some sort of establishment of a baseline of how much they're needed. working on that. Now. Yeah. That's the ask they're working on, but it is only the one that Melissa's working on is only for businesses, right. it's not for us. But no, everybody's part. being encouraged, each community is being encouraged right now to, to put together their ask, what they need. They need a number, that's what they said. It has to be a concrete yeah. number to ask for, and they, everyone's working. Who's that? Well, I think each community. So Melissa Bounty is helping do that for Montpelier, along with our business advocacy group. No, but I mean, who's going to receive this information? Who is they that's asking for it? Is that the treasurer from the last meeting? Uh, I, I think it's for a special ask, right? Like yeah. it, Melissa's- They're put, trying to put together something to bring to the legislature, right. to the governor, maybe to the feds. To just, right, yeah, I got you. I don't right. know exactly the channels, but- but the bottom line is there needs to be, uh, we need to quantify the economic loss for the city, like right. for Montpelier, right. both residences, the municipality, right, and business, okay. like, okay. We really, we're going to wrap up in just a second, and we do have, like, some next steps, but if there are other voices, yes. What about, wouldn't you not have a ballpark of the ask because everyone is being encouraged yes. to go there to register what they need? Yes. Uh, business is true, sir? No. That's the hard part. FEMA Race does not have a ballpark of for-profit businesses. SBA might, 
but SBA's um, system of tracking is very different. So FEMA will have the public assistance value of the infrastructure asks, and will have the individual assistance value, but will not probably have the for-profit losses. Last one, really quickly, I'm gonna survey the group, because I think when we consider money, and nobody knows where that comes from or how it started or what the figure could be, quick survey. Do you think it's under $500 million? Raise your hand. For the state of Vermont? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's under. No. Oh, you think it's under? Yeah, I no. think it's 100 to 150. Okay. For the state of Vermont? Yeah, for immediate near term yeah. response to these okay. downtowns. Yeah. I think that's okay. the, if that's the, that's the ballpark you're asking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, so, half and not, I'm not to nail that figure, but just so we start to have that's a working yes. concept that it's just not an average space. Yeah. yeah. But it's a smart way to think about it. Think globally because, oh, hey, give Mom Hillary something yeah. less compelling than give yeah. Vermont something, give the corridor that was impacted something, coalitions. You're a Democrat, but I bet you the people up uh, in some other place are Republicans. So come uh, together. <laughs> come yeah. together. Okay, great. Last one. Yeah. Uh, based on uh, his question, I'm just kind of uh, I, you know, going to all of that. What was the recovery now for Irene? Because obviously we're mm -hmm. north of Irene, and of course, we're there for our inflation. We are. Yeah. Other communities will get harder. Well, of course, the water, water there is. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I, I, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we have, I mean, already some really just great first initial action steps, right? And I think um, in terms of next steps, you know, they are standing up that commission, and I think that they're going to work really quickly to, like, take these kind of ideas and prioritize them. The last kind of thing that we're going to ask of you, like, you need to sign up on this, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> you. Like, it, it means, it does not mean you're signing up to go to a weekly meeting, right? But what it means is that you're going to be kept informed of this effort, and that if you see an opportunity for you to make a difference on this, then you need to, like, stay informed, follow it, wait for the call, step up when needed, but that's what you're signing up for here is to be kept informed of this effort. I think like just, just for the sake of conversation, like the idea of having a list of people who care about Montpelier, that when that conversation is having in the state house, that can be notified immediately that you need to be in that room at two o'clock today, right? Like that's what we're talking about here, okay? So please sign up. And then the next thing we're gonna do. And can I say something on that real quick? Yeah. Just that, you know, committee schedules, whenever we go back in there, usually come out on a Friday, right? And then we know what's going on the next week. And then what happens is when we testify, it's sort of the illusion of the public input. But you gotta make them uncomfortable, right? You gotta cram those rooms so they see it, you know, feel the presence of it. So if we can divide and conquer, just like you're saying, Ben, and sign up on that list and say, okay, you're going to natural resources, you're going to appropriations, and we're raising our hand at the end and chime it in for Montpelier, that's gonna be really effective. Because they expect us to go through the motions. We gotta we gotta take them outside the comfort zone. Okay. And by that I mean us. Yeah, you're <laughs> yeah. Right. Thank you, Connor. All right, so we're actually gonna go, I believe, back to the auditorium for some closing remarks. But um, there's a pen right here. If you could just take a minute and sign up if you're available to do that. I just have yes. a quick question about yes. action steps. Do we need to get a lobbyist? Is that what you're saying? Do we need a lobbyist to 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 um to speak for us? Well, actually? it's helpful because that person can be in the building. It's paid to be in the building and follow, you know, when those agendas come out and see when when those appropriate times are, um, and have conversations in the building to make sure that it's, um, you know, the uh, relief for Montpelier is on the agenda and yeah. be able to negotiate um, on on our behalf, on our collective behalf. So we have one. We pay about 15k from the city of Montpelier. And that monitor stuff, we might need to bump that up to actually like yeah. have a few people in there, right? It's very great for them. lobbyists who told me they would work for downtown um, businesses for free. I, I would also just point out, like, I think there are a lot of organizations that employ lobbyists at the state house right now <laughs> who could be activated because this is on mission, yes. right? Like the chamber has lobbyists, yeah, yeah. right? Like <laughs> the organization I work for has lobbyists, <laughs> right? Like, it feels like a good action step. Yes. yes. All these action steps, Jenna's doing a fantastic job of taking copious notes, okay. right? All of them are memorialized. We're gonna share them with the kind of leadership group that's organizing the commission and the other things, and they'll 
start to move this work forward, and you will be kept informed through the sign-up sheet. Are you talking about resources or no? We, we ran out of time. We ran out of time. Yeah. Okay. One more yes. suggestion is action step. Yeah. Uh, which is uh, the commission uh, to coordinate all of the interested potential lobbyists. Yeah. The cities and towns. Yes. Touch, like all the people that already have people in the building to coordinate those efforts. I think that would be very effective. Great. 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 I think. What's that? Thirty-five. Do you can go to eight forty-five? Eight forty. Eight forty. We're going to take this last five minutes to decompress and watch on the <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for coming to this. Yeah, I really appreciate it.